Bill Lambeer has been a somewhat quiet presence this year for the Pistons, but in the last few weeks, he's picked up his play and perhaps more importantly, taken on a more vocal role in Piston Matters. Quinn Buckner sat down with him this week and got his thoughts on a variety of topics. I make no apologies for my game uh, throughout my career. Uh, the only respect and admiration I need is of the 12 teammates on our ball club. And as long as they're all for me and I'm all for them and I have their respect, that's all that matters. And whatever the general public thinks about my style of play, I really could care less. character is uh, unlike by many. I don't believe this. Lane Beer gets in a fight seemingly once a week. How'd I do? Well, that all depends on what's being judged. If you're looking for the villain of the NBA, that's what Bill Lane Beer calls himself, then the fans score him a perfect 10. And if you're judging candidness, speaking your mind, Lane Beer does just as well. How many players would grab the headlines going into the playoffs by being very critical of their general manager for trading veteran players and for turning the coach into a lame duck? Uh, I felt it best for my own peace of mind and my own good just to speak my mind and my heart, uh, not only to our teammates, but just to get it out in the public sector, what basically is, was simmering in our, our organization. and. Um, I make no apologies for it. It had to come out, and it came out, and now we continue to play. You're very concerned about the nature of your organization in the future, and I, I, and I applaud that. Do you think that Jack McCluskey was helped understanding how the team felt when you made your comments? Um, I don't know. I, I, don't, I can't speak for how Jack McCluskey felt about what I said. Um, I can only tell you that your players must play for each other, they must love each other and love your organization, and your organization must love your players in return. And if you don't have that, you're an also ran. If you do have that, you'll always be successful. Your club uh, has had some significant involvement in the Olympics, one way or the other. You, <laughs> you got, might say that. <laughs> <laughs> you got Chuck Daly as the head coach. There's some you know, cloud as to whether or not Isaiah should or should not be on the team. Mm -hmm. Let's start with Chuck. How is his involvement with the Olympic uh, team affected your your Pistons team? It has to be a source such because we have a couple three guys that have credentials to be on the Olympic team. We have the head coach on the Olympic team. We had a guy on the selection committee and for none of our players to be on there it's going to cause a slight bit of friction. You have to be honest about it. Which reminds me if I recall you were thinking of trying to get the Olympic the selection process changed. Uh, obviously if you give somebody Olympic spot he has no choice but to take it. But if you open it up for tryouts and just make the guy make a commitment to the Olympic movement first, um, some of those players may not have made that commitment and will allow some other players to get on. It's not about, Olympics are not about giving, it's about personal sacrifice and, and, and dedication to the sport that you're in, making sacrifices. And, and the way they went about selecting the process, they, they didn't make any sacrifices. They were just said, here, please, please, please play for our team. That's not right. You could very possibly lose Chuck Daly for next season. How, how just so orienting is that for the team? Chuck Daly is a difficult subject to address because he doesn't have a contract for the future so where's our team going? I mean you can't just live for today. You have to have some futuristic ideas um, as far as integrating some of your players in there because it's hard to it's hard to take a team and just say this is what we're going to do business today without any eye on the future. And that's been part of our problem this year is we haven't had any eye on the future and what direction are we headed. I think my competitive nature has something to do with the way I'm perceived. Um, I don't give an inch at all on the, on the court. I don't give anybody any respect. Uh, I think that's the major problem with a lot of other players is I don't respect their game. If they happen to get in the way, well, that's not my fault. That's their fault. Um, stay out of our way. We're coming through trying to win the game and in professional athletics that's the difference between being good and being a champion. At the end of the playoffs last year you guys walked by the Bulls and didn't shake their hand. Is, was that intentional? It was intentional on my part. Um, I felt that Michael Jordan um, may be a very good outstanding basketball player but in no way does that make him a better person than anybody. 
And for him to say and to make value judgments on us as individuals where he does not know us as individuals, all he knows is our style of play. But to make value judgments on us as individuals and to put them into the public medium on the newspapers or on television, um, who is he? I mean, it, it is, he, all he does is play basketball. In the, in the world, he's this big. I mean, he may be up there because he has publicists and media and, and pumping him up, but as a individual down-to-earth heart person, he, he has, I mean, who is he? Who cares about him? I make no apologies for my game uh, throughout my career. Whatever the general public thinks about my style of play, I really could care less. Mm. By the way, Michael Jordan's publicists have helped him win the scoring title again. He leads by a full two points over Karl Malone. Even should Jordan be held scoreless today, the mailman would need to score 164 tonight against San Antonio to overtake him. So I would say it is safe, and Michael's publicists breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> they do. I want to talk about the Olympic point because Bill Lambier and I agree on this, this initial thought that as a former member of that selection process, I thought that it should be, quote, open. But the problem is, how are you going to get, you know, Michael Jordan and these other guys to make a commitment early to come, to come be a part of this? So they decided to ask him, do you, will you commit if chosen? And the guys made a decision as to will it, if they would. They all said yes. So though I agree with him, the reality says there's no way to do it that way. Here's where Lambeer has to get credit, not just for his tough play, which may infuriate opponents, but which has helped the Pistons be a championship caliber team. But this whole thing, the comments about McCloskey, the comments about Jordan and the Bulls, it's been a catharsis, not just for him, but for the whole team. I don't think there's any question about it, Bob. I think the team is better for it because, you know, it, it, the, the bloodletting was, was good for them. They needed to do it. They have been frustrated the entire year. Now they can focus on trying to get back to the championship. And the folks in the uh, production truck out in Chicago tell me that we're going to hear Michael Jordan's response, at least in part to what Lambeer said, during the course of the broadcast, which is coming up. The Pistons and the Bulls from Chicago Stadium.